James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is December 27th, 2022. Noon Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had three M-class solar flares today and associated coronal mass ejections. The first was an M2.0, then we followed by two M1.0s and 1.22s. As you can see, we're running a very healthy C baseline as well. We've had several C spikes, but more importantly, the three M spikes coming from 3169 and coming from a new name sunspot, 3176. We'll take a look at that. All right, here is our Earth facing sun. Looks like we have six named sunspots on it. The two that are giving us the most trouble right now are 3169 and 3176. Always on the limbs. Very strange. When they're Earth facing, nothing ever happens. Our 2.2. M flare came from our new sunspot 3176, whereas both 1 and 1 1.2 M flares came from sunspot 3169. All probably generated a coronal mass ejection. We'll have to wait to see if any of that's going to be Earth directed. Over Alaska C3, what we're looking for are three M class flares. One of them was supposed to pop off at 1 UTC time. That well, might have been it right there. The other one at around 8 UTC time. And then the third one at around 1630 UTC time. So let's try that again. 1, 8, and 1630. Here comes one right about now. Do we see anything? Uh, not much coming out of this area. And it should really be coming out of this area up here. Uh, let's look at 8 UTC time. Do we see anything at 8 UTC time? Well, there was some action coming out of the side here. Not much. And then again, let's take a look at about 16.30 UTC time, which is right about, and again, I saw nothing. Maybe, maybe the first flare we see here, it looks a little early, something jets out there, and at the end here at 16.30, there's nothing to see. So none of the M-class solar flares are going to really be visible on Lasco C3, as usual, only if they may have an Earth component. So very strange. Over to GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager. We do have that coronal hole Earth facing. You should see those solar winds today, tomorrow, or very shortly. We see 3169 leaving around the limb here. And 3171 coming around the limb here. And no visible eruptions happen within the last hour on GOES. We will hit SDO. All right, let's take a quick look. And we're not going to be able to see the first or second M flare, the D Region Absorption Prediction Center. But we should be able to see the last one at 16.30 UTC time. We'll keep an eye on that right there. And I think it's going to bring it right to us. That's a nice C spike, not an M flare. Another C spike. We're getting real close to 1630 when we do have that M flare. And we should be seeing it right about now. Oh, that was great timing. So a total of three M-class flares. To me, I would guesstimate that they all had an Earth component, but we're going to have to see, right? 
Nothing is as it seems anymore here on Noah's dashboard. All right, heading over to real time solar winds. We had a lot of data taken away from us late last night. It looked like when that flare took off. Although the flare that we were told about happened somewhere after uh, 0 hundred UTC time, we saw a nice size flare during this three hours of removed data. The only other space weather events we have are just recently here, and they are wind spikes, solar wind spikes. Yes, the plasma spiked up to 12, uh, a little bit over 12 really in places, but that's not going to be sufficient enough to cause a geomagnetic storm, even though 10 centimeters cubed is the space weather threshold. These jumps from way down here at 503, to way up here at 550 well that's 50 kilometers per second times 2200 real quick we'll, uh, we're talking over a hundred and ten thousand mile per hour increase in solar winds Wow so you can see that is what causes those spike overs these spikes especially when you come from 481 kilometers per second up to 544 it's going to be over 60 kilometers per second difference and that's going to bring us up to closer to 130,000 miles per hour in solar wind difference just in that short period of time which is going to cause these crossovers do we see the plasma from the filament hitting i would say no we never saw it period all right, over to SDO. On the left, we have 193 angstroms. There's that coral hole that's going to be earth facing. Here is 3169 and 3176. These are our two most active sunspots. You might be able to see it better at 171 angstroms over here. I did call this sunspot 3171. It's 3176. Let's clarify that. When we were on goes i called it 3171 look at the crackling going on in 3176 that is where the larger of the m flares was generated from we also had one of at least one of the m flares perhaps the two one and 1.22 m flares generated by this although i tell you what 3176 looks awful active and will soon be directly earth facing. Over to our KP indexes. Could that filament have hit yesterday? It very well could have. We're seeing KP7's strong geomagnetic winds for six hours yesterday. That could have been that impact. And we're starting to see some other action here for the last three hours. We still have six hours in the day here. Something can happen. Uh, that's going to be 12 to 3 and 3 to 6 central time here in the U.S. And we are expecting, well, something to happen. Let's take a look at what they forecasted. And let's also remember on the Boulder model that they often show us, they have... Nine hours of geomagnetic storm, KP5, and six more hours of geomagnetic disturbance, which we don't really see unless we look at the solar winds that are increased. And what causes those solar winds to increase? Well, regularly, a Earth-facing coral hole, although it has not really been Earth-facing for more than about 24 hours. So again, I am left uh, speechless. Things are not working as a puzzle like they used to with all the models. All right, today is the 27th. They haven't messed with this in some time. Uh, they have solar winds down here, actually, and I would too, but they're at, uh, well, 480 to 550 right here. They actually forecasted them right around 300 kilometers per second. Uh, a pretty sad forecast and it said that they haven't redone it in so many days jump back and take a look at the 27th this is the plasma they have inbound 
They only have it going up to about 10 centimeters cubed. I'm guessing that's the filament there. And that could be what we're seeing now. That just does not seem very powerful for a filament of that size and the associated CME. But they did nail it. We did go up to about 10 to 12 centimeters cubed as far as the plasma for today. This is the WSA Animal Prediction Center. Usually 100% useless. God bless you and yours, folks. Share and subscribe. Always remember that anything is possible in Bizarro World.